Hello everybody, today I'm going to demonstrate to you automated zero touch day one or bare metal provisioning, whichever you'd like to call it, using HP Comware switches or routers. So uh, this is going to be uh, of two parts in terms of a bit of an explanation and then a bit of a demonstration. Um, so let's go straight into a bit of the explanation. So um, the automatic configuration process is actually e explained in the fundamental configuration guides of all the products under the automatic configuration section. Now there's various flow charts to tell you what can happen and what are the different scenarios. Uh, today I'm taking a very simplistic view where I'm going to use a few DHCP options and a TFTP server to basically show it can be done very simplistically. Uh, there are other options as well. So um, I've summarized it on the right. Uh, when you power on a device, the interface comes up, assuming it's connected to another device somewhere in the network. Uh, it then gets allocated a IP address via DHCP. Notice um, that very importantly, it's only a temporary address, not temporary as in DHCP, as in once the device has received that address and it auto configures itself, that address is removed. So you have to ensure that your template is configured as such that it allows for that. Otherwise, you, you leave yourself uh, without any connectivity potentially. Or there may be a scenario where you actually want to do that in a factory environment, take it away and configure that address. So the options available, but I'll cover that in the demo. We push down our, our options um, or use options uh, from DHCP to cover that, which is option three, which is effectively uh, telling you about the default gateway. Then we have op option 67, which names uh, the boot file of the device. And then finally we have option 150 and option 150 basically tells the device where to get the uh, boot file from, which is in our case, a TFTP server address. Okay, um, so the TFTP server here then provides uh, the server based template after which the, the device automatically configures itself. And after that, you basically have a configured device with minimal skills and um, zero touch. So let's have a quick look at uh, practically how it might look in a sort of real world life scenario. You would have some sort of layer three network. You have a DHCP server, as I said, at uh, the head end or the data center or your uh, head office, maybe uh, a TFTP server too, and this can be multiple TFTPs and multiple DHCP servers. You have some sort of core network, some sort of distribution network. That distribution network typically will have the DHCP gateways uh, pushed down uh, around here, but it depends on your network situation. Uh, and your topology where you have those. And then these are the devices that we want to uh, auto configure typically, which is uh, high volume or remote sites where people uh, don't have the skills or we've got a high volume to deploy. And it doesn't make sense to send people out to each of those sites when you could send a person in a van just to, or a truck to basically power on the device and plug it in and it auto configures. So um, those DHCP servers uh, send down basically the address mask and gateway and also the TFTP address to where to get the config from. And the TFTP server provides the base template and that's pretty much uh, the setup. Uh, let's have a look at the setup I've got. I have got this all in a virtual environment using uh, HP VSRs that are supported in uh, VMs. So I've got a um, 
a server here which is 10.10.10.100 uh, uh, which is uh, Windows 2008 uh, revision 2 with a TFTP and a DHCP server. I've then got a data center, a core router, which uh, is a, at the top end um, of the network. Then I've got an aggregation router, which uh, is going to be where I have my DHCP um, configuration for the gateway because obviously this is a routed network here typically. I'm running OSPF here, uh, just out of interest. I've got some loopbacks that I know are gonna be easy to access. And this is the device that we're really interested in having the auto configuration or the minimal touch. So let's go across and have a look at the configuration of this uh, specific uh, VSR. Now um, I'm in here at the moment, so if I display uh, current configuration it's very simple to set up the gateway all you do is enable um, DHCP uh, on the device over here and then uh, all you do on the interface that's um, facing the auto configuration device on your gateways is this configuration here where it's got a IP address obviously we just say DHCP select relay and then we tell the device where the DHCP server or the address of DHCP server in our case 10 10 10 100 which is this device here you can have up to eight uh, devices now let's have a quick look at uh, the server configuration itself um, here we are. So this is the DHCP uh, server sitting on Windows 2008. I've got a very small pool of four addresses just because it's a lab. Um, and then let's have a look at the options. So on the DHCP server, I've got option three, which is the default gateway that gets pushed down in the uh, offer file. Uh, also, we have the boot file name in the offer file, which is called firstbase.cfg. Uh, it's the first base config, so it makes sense for me. And then I've got option 150, which tells me where is that first base config uh, residing. And in fact, it's the same uh, device as my uh, DHCP server, which is 10, 10, 10, 100. Um, so let's actually quick have a look at this first base config so that you know um, what we're going to push down uh, to the device. And here it is. It's just a simple uh, name. I've put a router ID. I've got some OSPF running, so it makes it simple for me to get connectivity. Um, and this is what I was talking about. I've actually allocated, again, a DHCP address after the configuration is done. I'll get another address again from the DHCP server. You can put a static address in there if you want. Uh, but if you've got multiple devices in, um, then you, it may be simpler to do that. But it's up to you. I just enabled a bit of telnet so I can telnet to the device from my head end or my head office or my data center and I've just allowed uh, telnet in and no authentication to to make things simpler. So let's go across to the device we're trying to because it's a virtual world I have the luxury of actually seeing it uh, powered on and as you can see this device is in uh, incessant loop effectively it's now tried about 20 odd times to try and get a configuration but it's not um, done it at all so um, it's in a bit of limbo and there it is it's trying again and it's failing okay so we're going to uh, run the process now i've explained to you what the setup is let's uh, go across um, to the server and start that off but let me first uh, just uh, make it fresh as if we've uh, powered up the device. I'm going to restart the uh, VSR, which is in the remote location that's powering up. 
let's start a bit of a capture on Wireshark so we can see what's uh, going on. Okay, I'm now going to activate the scope. So that should all be going. Uh, let's uh, go across to the VSR and see what's happening. So uh, first of all, what happens is the VSR comes up and the com uh, and the actual or, or, or the router or the switch comes up and typically first time uh, it's just getting ready and, and never does it. Well, the second time typically we will see that it kicks into life once it's got the um, DHCP address and it does all the configuration. So it's just a matter of waiting. Uh, here we are. Now you can see that the second configuration attempt, the interface has uh, gone up. It's enabled DHCP client. Oh, there you are. It's done it immediately. So you can see I've obtained an IP address 172.31.1.2. I've obtained a configuration file, which is the file that I specified first base.cfg. So it's uh, basically looked at that. Uh, option in the offer in the um, in the DHCP options and then there it is that option 150 which pointed to 10 10 10 100 telling me where the configuration file was and I successfully downloaded the file from the TFTP server then as I said in the expression we execute the configuration file and that's done it it says please wait and it's all successfully completed now I could uh, just hit the return button and see there you are my demo node has now been configured display current configuration you can see it's got some configuration if I go across uh, back to the server um, uh, we could uh, I could even, uh, I could already telnet it across to that. I think it's an old, I telnet across to that device. You can see I've telneted across to that. So uh, the configuration, I've successfully now got access um, to my remote device from my data center. We can a quick have a look at Wireshark and see what's happened as well. You can see we got the DHCP discover. We then got an offer. We got another request. Um, you can have a look at these traces on yourself when you um, configure it or have a look, but you can see that the TFTP request happened. You got some acknowledgements. Um, pretty much the process is as we expected and they, and, um, that really concludes that. So I've uh, demonstrated to you how to configure a device remotely using some really simple options uh, effectively. So where does that leave us effectively? Um, we've got base connectivity and uh, configuration has been achieved. So really what next? So um, you got, I guess, maybe two or three options, but if it's on a small scale, and you're doing this not very often, you can just manually configure the device uh, via SSH, Telnet or SNMP. Um, and that's quite simple. Then you can update your CMDB and other systems to say that it's done. Or if you're doing it on a medium to larger scale, you can take it to the next level and fully automate things. Um, you can use tools such as HP's IMC, which is Intelligent Management Center, or if you're using HP Network, Network Automation, which is part of HP NNI, you can also customize large scale configurations. Um, so if you need to find some more information, please go to the fundamental configuration guides of the products and look at the automatic configuration guide section. So I hope that was useful and informative for you and thank you for watching.